So if you haven't checked uh, barnekills.com, please go do so. There is a lot of interesting tools. One of the more recent ones is this ECG game. So this tool scrolls the uh, different uh, ECG waveforms on the screen and you meant to click on which one is abnormal. So if you see some abnormality in the PQRST, uh, click on it. That's how you gain scores. And um, in the newer version, you play against the robot. I mean, you're not really playing against it. We can collaborate because um, the robot will actually tell you everything it does. It's a fuzzy logic algorithm looking at positive peaks, uh, negative peaks, raw amplitude, um, R peak sharpness. So it's essentially halfway through the R peak uh, looking at the distance uh, on the left and right and the intervals between P and R and R and T. So between the different uh, peaks uh, within the PQRST. And we'll give you an abnormality score. So in this case, it's high, meaning it's likely to be abnormal, 0.7. So it's between 0 and 1. 0.5, still 0.55 is still on the highest side. 0.7, so you know to click on it. If you just look at that number there, you can kind of collaborate with the robot. And this one has a 0.39 or 0.3, and that's uh, on the lower side. And that tells you it's a normal signal, so do not click on it. And yes, some are harder to detect than others. Can also reduce the noise and see how it affects the normal, the robot, well, and your own uh, performance. Yeah, for normal ECG, it goes uh, normal abnormality score goes all the way down to 0.28 something. Yeah, we know for sure the robot doesn't make any mistakes whatsoever when the noise is uh, low like this. And you shouldn't make any mistakes either, unless you are not paying attention, which is very common for humans, unfortunately. Now, when we send the noise all the way up, it will start making mistakes. In this case, the false alarm rate will go up. It keeps false alarming, so essentially it's labeling essentially everything as abnormal. You can try and fix the algorithm, but it's actually good for you to see what happens uh, with increased noise. That some of the uh, algorithms, even the fancy, fanciest machine learning algorithms, they just stop working. So if you wonder why. This is a, a good tool to explain that, to show that in, well, real world. But yeah, this is synthetic data. But um, yeah, we simulate uh, all these possibilities. So you can see the false alarm for the robot keeps going up. And actually now as a human, I probably have a chance to match the score of the machine because yeah, it will keep making mistakes so in theory its score should be going down but still going up well right because um yeah there is a bias in the system there is 60 40 60 percent uh, abnormal and only 40 percent normal a uh, waves coming from so if if you just keep clicking on everything your score will be going up uh, yeah, it's, it is much harder. Yeah, that was normal. Yeah, and it becomes much faster as you gain uh, 50 scores and more. Let's restart it for a sec. Yeah, so that's the default um, noise level and we'll be doing some mistakes, no, hopefully not too many. If you're paying attention, it should be fairly straightforward with this noise level to detect which one, which waveform is abnormal. Yeah, and as you saw, when it reaches 50 points, um, the speed increases slightly. And there are videos of me reaching 1,000 points. It's crazy fast, so beware. You can obviously go try it out on bionicchaos.com. And yes, there are ads running, so apologies in advance. Hopefully you get something relevant. We'll be also adding this uh, hopefully not too annoying tool where you can uh, 
select the number of particles and the speed of them. And there is this little drum in the middle where when where each time a particle bounces against it, it will generate a sound. The sound is importantly actually this description is wrong. So I have to rewrite it. Yeah, GPT started like hallucinating with the code it uh, generated by itself. In terms of uh, yeah, there's a few incorrect things about it. And yes, we have a disclaimer for GPT-4 and GitHub Copilot use. It will be on the site. It should be everywhere, really, on the site. Just talking rubbish. Uh, we, yeah, the prompt wasn't great. Yeah, I don't think we have the updated code. Might update the code for a sec. It would be nice to tie this to EEG, actually have uh, different channels, the number of particle for each uh, channel. Yeah, that's what I was trying to get at, not the uh, general stuff. Yes, yeah, so we actually can uh, use it that way. I don't, I do actually have a gear uh, which I can record EG. Let me know if I should uh, undust it, try it again. It might be a while to set up. It's a bit prototypey, but yes, you can have your number of channels, and the speed could correspond to frequency. Which no, it doesn't at the moment. The sound uh, being generated um, is uh, corresponding to the. So first of all, each uh, particle is its own note. Yeah, try different uh, note scales. Currently we're using, supposedly, I think it's wrong, a D major. So uh, notes between D4 and C5. And there is uh, not the correct amount. So some of the notes, you know, as you keep adding them, I think will get uh, repeated. The speed is currently just set manually. Yes, you could tie it to EEG or something. Yeah, so EEG review doesn't have to be this. <laughs> You know, old school uh, uh, stuff like this. Uh, we want to develop some uh, newer ways uh, to review EG. Yes, yeah, so even though it's uh, time series data, you can review it in a different way. So have to be. So as you scroll through the file, as more EG coming in, you can just update uh, that. This tool is a bit heavy. You can hear my CPU. Yeah, and it has an error in it as well. It's loading in a certain way. And then the CSS, the styling is applied after like 10, 20, yeah, 20 seconds or so, which is not great. Yeah, this is a more kind of standard uh, ECG review. Yeah, you can group by left and right or overlay them all which can be useful. In this case, you only have uh, 16. Yeah, the separation won't work in this case. A group by side. Yes, yeah, separation won't work as well. It only works for off. And then you can uh, decide what your separation level is. This is a seizure. Yeah, an evolution of a seizure. And then quiet after the seizure ends. And this is uh, 16 implanted channels that are available in the public domain. they available on IEG, IEEG.org. I think just a simple registration and you cut yourself the data. There was an older Kegel competition using that data. Anyway, so I'm just saying you could convert something like this to, to that. Essentially, when you have a seizure, the frequency goes up, so then uh, the speed can go up like that so you can essentially see and hear a seizure in a different way we do have a tool that allows you to listen to seizure and eg to music converter but yes um, someone someone was saying that it's uh, not uh, not real essentially yeah but that there is some fancy not fancy but uh, there is a remapping to musical to musical uh, notes and that's therefore 
to a specialist this might sound a bit odd because normally they don't uh, do this uh, remapping to music they just keep it at the uh, frequencies uh, um, so for example if I'm playing four notes I'll be just doing uh, these exact frequencies converting them directly to sound but uh, it sounds horrible so it's okay to review for like a couple seconds but you won't be actually sitting there listening to it when you have to review very long uh, a period periods of time so if you're reviewing uh, EEG with something like this that can be just circling uh, in a specific direction well obviously clock <laughs> clockwise so it would be like your EEG clock or something you would call it EEG clock Yes, all these tools are quite uh, prototype at the moment. Yeah, there is always a question of uh, how much more do you need to, you know, develop it, improve it before it's considered less prototypey. I would say never. It's <laughs> everything is a prototype, even though it's called uh, a product. A lot of products are prototypes. You can look at the uh, Windows. <laughs> Even look at the um, NVIDIA uh, GPUs, for example. Yeah, for example, now I'm having lots of trouble with uh, drivers for Linux. I mean, it's working, but then there's, um, a, you know, 10 different types supposedly optimized for various things, but it's not clear. It seems to be all, uh, a, again, prototypey. And you have ones uh, that have all this, like, new uh, features in them and stuff but supposedly less uh, stable so this is what uh, this is they still sell it as a product yeah, you can uh, that uh, nvidia software thing that does uh, eye tracking essentially replacement yeah, if you can see the eyes are there still testing the tool it is available on the side as an option to split the view and yeah and then they just overlay eyes that look at the camera so it looks like you you know talking with the audience whatever um that tool is very raw to say the least i have some older uh, videos on it uh, testing it out it only works on uh, windows i think so now i'm on linux i can't even uh, use it anymore but even on windows yeah it was um yeah pretty raw and yes it's supposedly free but then you have you need the you know an expensive uh, gpu to actually run that software so no it is not free so yeah question is uh, fair enough but uh, i don't think anyone can really answer it what's a prototype and what's uh, what's an actual product it's working really really well i haven't tried it on another machine though now question is like how many resources does it take currently uh, so this is running all in the javascript there's no backend at the moment yeah if you add some uh, eg data for this it will require a backend Let's see how we go that this one does have a backend pretty sure is this where the data is being pulled uh, from sitting on the server so yeah go check out those tools and you will be supporting the project that way and not cardio bot i will also have a blend altman tool uh, that's more of a blog yeah someone was asking about it yeah it looks like this at the moment this actually has the cause it's kind of uh, yeah it's uh, just a blog those are static uh, images a basic one and a more realistic uh, blend Altman blend Altman plot and it's actually has this simple Python code in it that used that was used to generate uh, these two charts so you can just copy paste it some essentially general overview on the plots yes yeah, so if you interested in blend Altman plots there is a link and this one should be live as well I forgot what's called particle something particle yeah it's called particles 
do I don't know if is it uh, large like that what does it look like it's scaling nicely it's actually pretty pretty nice I don't remember <laughs> I don't remember actually doing it what does it look like on a mobile yeah this thing is not fun um, so the browser is essentially preventing a uh, preventing um, the music from uh, playing I don't know what font do you have it's it's not always accurate so I know so I have my custom uh, dimensions yeah the theoretical um, dimensions of the phone is not actually the actual dimensions yeah it's confusing like that yeah it will scale quite nicely I like it yeah the audio you need to essentially interact with the page for the audio to kick in yeah, why is it so big like that yeah we need the yeah, it shouldn't be so huge should limit the canvas it's okay to scale horizontally I don't get it it's scaling fine on mobile no wait this is mobile anyway I'll leave it like this for for now yes we have a tool called seizure fuzz because we applying fuzzy logic to seizures so this is a Kaggle competition it's uh, I mean this is loading data from it trying to display it okay this is what the front page looks like you know why it's so small okay, we'll fix it in a bit you can select your it's called uh, EGID that's just how the data is stored it's a really weird uh, format so we have the 26.5 gigabyte it's uh, stored in this weird fashion we're trying to display it so currently we're loading the spectrogram data but it's not actually updating to the corresponding EGID so we need to fix that then we be doing some basic processing and training a fuzzy logic algorithm so we have a bunch of labels in this data uh, specifically those with different type types of uh, abnormal eeg activity important file currently is this train csv you can uh, open it look what's in it essentially there is an eeg id and you see that there are multiple copies of it and that there is an offset in uh, seconds so for example the original one that we load by default had the, has this 18 labels i don't know they're all the same anyway well really the expert consensus is the only useful thing in it yeah freezing first row is handy anyway we have a six or four that should be somewhere in the beginning now that's interesting this one has 90 a sub id is it's quite unusual and it's telling you chat quickly keep saying quickly it's never quickly is it someone is asking saying i'm interested in data analytics do you have a suggestion what i should learn first well first first of all you should go and check out bionicchaos.com because that of course will answer all your questions no i'm just joking but uh, yeah if you do check the website and you have any specific questions that are relevant to one of the tools we're actually publishing more tools as we speak do let me know that javascript so we have back end in here and front end because the data is in the back end uh, the data is in this uh, parquet the raw data is in this parquet file so obviously python can happily uh, deal with them pass them do whatever you need with them so that's good let's clear this for a sec okay so i have the eg id have different types of eg it looks like potentially spiking it actually says the uh, lpd lpd is one of the labels so we have one two three four five six labels we have experts uh, labeling this data Let's uh, look at the data on uh, different EEG channels. 
you have the patient ID. Hopefully it's correct. I'm not actually sure. So this is a back and thing. And this is what we were doing last time. So the spectrogram is now displayed. Are we always displaying the same spectrogram? Well, the answer to that should be yes. But it's not always the same. The spectrum is displayed. Determine spectrum ID is used to get a corresponding parquet file. Okay. But when we select a different EEG ID, can we print out the spectrogram ID? Can we do this? Okay, spectrogram ID is uh, 10, 8, 3. So what happens if we select? Okay, how about when selecting a different EEG ID, do we also have the updated spectrogram ID from the test CSV file? The answer to that should be no. Yeah, it does not update automatically, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we do wanna, we do need to update that. Actually need to not just print it in the back end, we, we might wanna display it on the, fur, on the front page. Create a mapping between EG and the inspection ID. Well, how come we don't know where it is? We have get the spectrogram data. We haven't changed anything in the code, but I might get rid of this silly comments. I wonder if uh, people start uh, coding without any comments, considering uh, most uh, language models can explain most code these days. I'll try to start convert H data. Right, this one. Yeah, that's a uh, default. Because again, we'll just have the GPT or Copilot explaining the code. Yeah, we'll leave that one. It's assembling right. So we have this JavaScript. Can we explain how the spectrogram ID is being found from the train? CSV file. How is it being updated when the EEG ID is uh, changed on the front page? Uh, currently, we seem to have it uh, displaying the same spectrogram regardless of what, of when uh, the EEG ID is uh, changed by the user. A uh, yeah, train CSV. That's right. Amazing how it gets all the context correctly. <laughs> it can correct human mistakes. Yeah, probably humans will be making way more mistakes than the bots. I'm pretty sure we already have this line in a JavaScript code. Yes, we do. EGID, this value. Yeah, we get the EGID. This one is the same. I don't know why you regenerating it. Okay, fetch update chart and update chart and fetch spectrogram ID and update. Okay, this is the new function to fetch and display the spectrogram. Now we're adding a new one. How many root, root, routes, routes, routes? We currently have 10. Why so many? Have get patient ID, get related data. It's a weird one. Should have been just. Uh, yeah, I don't think we need this one. Get spectrogram data. Yeah, this one is uh, getting the spectrogram ID. Yes, it's working okay the first time around. When you select a different EG ID, it's giving an error. Because like it doesn't exist or what? Hey, we're getting the following error. Just to be sure, the first time around, 
the spectrogram is loading and I assume it's the correct one because you obviously passed uh, the train CSV file correctly but then again I'm getting an error so when selecting a different EG ID something is not right let's try it out so the first time we run it there's no errors when we select a different EG ID there is an error we have it in it's failing to fetch the a spectrogram ID. Yeah, I should have an example of uh, yeah the trend CSV. Can you focus on this one? Uh, here is an example of the train CSV file. A uh, first twenty three entries again. We already shared it before. The first time around, it's working okay, and we're displaying, assuming correct uh, spectrogram to begin with. But when uh, selecting a different EEG ID, something doesn't work. Can you fix that? Yes, we we'll review the client side. Right, we get the spectrogram data. It is weird, but it is there. However, question is, what happens if we select a different EEG ID? And it does work. Okay, so it didn't just do more error handling, it's actually fixed the code. So that's good. So currently we do have the 26.5 gigabyte downloaded on our server. It's open access uh, a data set. Uh, in here, by default, when loading the page, it's loading this EG ID. Reason being, it has something that looks like a seizure or what we used to a uh, process uh, on in our project. You can check how it looks like on different EG channels. You can check the ECG. And this one is weird because um, if we want this scaling correctly, I don't have anything in style CSS. Uh, sorry, just check if, by the way, there's a problem with patient ID and not loading correctly it's always the gpt4 is better in uh, html before we display the spectrogram we would like to display the spectrogram id but we might as well uh, do it over here we don't need that silly comment Patient ID, and here um, is display spectrogram ID. Uh, that's actually interesting that it's suggesting that because it is what we uh, have in the train CSV file, VG label. No, wait a second, that's actually wrong. You're already displaying the start time now we don't need a submit we have the offset in seconds display a spectrogram spectrogram label offset in seconds you know what the label id actually means an id for the patient who donated the data that's patient id label id and id for this an ID for this set of labels. What? Doesn't make any sense. But okay. okay. Let's do one at a time. Yeah, I'll need some explanation for this uh, HTML page as well before we publish the tool and make it available for you. Yeah, the code is not super large, so we. It's like medium size. I added uh, some uh, new outputs in the html specifically the spectrogram id and the spectrogram label offset in seconds i would like to actually populate them the spectrogram id we should already have from the back end uh, we just want to display it on the front panel of what uh, this should correspond to the current a spectrogram that being displayed on the screen and 
it should update as well when a different EEG ID is selected. Now each spectrogram also has a label offset in seconds. Uh, we need to figure out how to display it as well. And if you haven't checked Bionic Chaos yet, please do so. There's a lot of tools that you might be interested in. And don't forget to let me know what you think. Currently, we're also adding a bunch of uh, new ones. Yeah, I know it kind of looks silly and uh, not relevant, but actually, uh, later we would be trying turning this into a different way to review EEG uh, waveforms. So, for example, if you had a uh, seizures like we do have, say, in this example, then uh, the speed could be mapped to frequency. Each uh, channel has its own uh, note, a musical note. Uh, the number of particles will be the number of channels. But here you have uh, 20, 20 of them. So you will have uh, 20 particles like this. And once you having a seizure, so if uh, this was uh, showing this data over time, so you will see all the channels. And if there is a seizure, during seizure it will start going like this and then slow down again. Uh, after the seizure, we can have each uh, channel like in a different color or a different musical note, which we currently have. So this is just a prototype for something like that. In this case, potentially we could uh, uh, review seizures in a more in a different way. It could map uh, speed to frequency. Yeah, I have to think about how to do it exactly. Yeah, I have to check how is this, uh, how the spectrograms uh, um, actually being displayed. There might be something wrong. Uh, those are not the images, those are Parquet files. I'm still not displaying the spectrogram ID. Yeah, I kind of trust the uh, uh, GPT-4 better. GPT-4. Okay, update the related data and it takes uh, EEG ID and sub ID as input. That sounds legit. Hopefully the IDs are correct. You can actually test in a second. Is it correct? It is. It's not being updated. A spectrogram ID drop down is currently not uh, showing anything and uh, not updating. Just trying to display the data, the default one is this EEG ID seem to have a seizure in it. You can't really see it in the spectrogram. I'm wondering if there's something wrong with the way it's being plotted. I also need to populate the spectrogram ID to make sure it's the correct one and the label offset because in this case there are 18 labels. Most of them overlap so I don't know why there's so many. Bit of a data budging there. It's an example of how to load the normal size data set into big data to just replicate a lot of the stuff. I think GPT might have stuffed up our code. I'm not certain. This would be in the, yeah, I'm still in the JavaScript. Now there's a problem with this bit. It's shorter. I'm pretty sure something would be missing. This one was better. It was actually displaying the spectrogram. The spectrogram is in, in the Parquet files. I have the structure for it. I don't think we're parsing it correctly. It should be four uh, of them. So this is an example of the... Not the example. This is the train CSV. It's the kind of stuff we have in it. Uh, all the labels. Some example... Yeah, so there should be four of these uh, spectrograms. But we get more. I don't know why. Yeah, we're not passing them correctly. Yeah, we still uh, have the spectrogram ID is uh, not being displayed correctly, I think. If we can uh, fix it in the code, that would be great. Another thing we need to check is that the spectrogram parquet file is being passed correctly 
So Bob is a sample from the file and it's timing not matching the raw EEG. So the spectrogram is 10 minutes and the EEG is 50 seconds or more. Well, it should be 50 seconds. So we need to sort out how we display it all properly. Yeah, I need a proper explanation of what the Parquet file for the spectrogram is. Yeah, this bit is important. We focus on how the spectrogram Parquet file is being passed and displayed and also make sure that the spectrogram ID and the spectrogram label offset seconds are being retrieved from the train CSV file correctly and displayed on the front page. They're meant to be for spectrograms display as explained above. Yes, in theory we should have all this uh, separate uh, canvases for the different spectrograms which is how the raw data is being displayed. Yeah, it is some fundamental changes to the code so we might lose what we have so far. Yeah obviously we're having a problem with passing. Yeah, let's display this a uh, four separate canvases changing display spectrogram. Uh, do we need to keep this one? Uh, probably not. We already have this function. Uh, now display spectrogram has a uh, spectrum data and region. Date related data. Yeah, we can comment this one and that one out. Get related data. Uh, that will be in a Python. This will obviously not work. F region not defined, which is fair enough. Uh, we have four of them. Okay, what else do we need to do? Okay, the regions are not defined. Yeah, I suspect the uh, GitHub Copilot would not be able to deal with this. Hey, we need to update this code. Hey, I need you to help me. The main problem currently is that the spectrograms are not being displayed at all. Okay, what do we need to change? 